Anthony here. I know you just watched the other video, and this is the sermon that I'll be preaching this morning. So I always like to bring it to you all as just as well. Um, you know, a whole lot's been going on with the storms and trials of life. And, uh, you know, when you hear the word storm, what usually comes to your mind? You know, it's with the weather, right? <laughs> you know, we've been seeing some crazy weather patterns. I mean, going across our country. Yeah, I knew I talked to some friends of mine the other day. It was snowing up in Alberta, Canada, the big snowflakes. You know, we just had that hurricane hit uh, Florida in and then, you know, a lot of damage. I mean, it was a major storm, you know. Uh, but with the way that I travel, you know, with the RV transport, you know, I see all kinds of different types of weather, you know, from rain to wind, to, you know, to snow to sunshine. I mean, just all kinds of you know stuff and i remember the the worst one i've been in you know was in santa barbara or santa Ana. uh the winds there you know rain and lightning doesn't really bother me but that dust storm that i was in in california in santa Ana, uh i mean the winds that was that was one time that i was actually pretty scared uh, you know and really was looking to get off the road and then when we think about the people in florida you know who stayed and faced that hurricane and you know had to be rescued i just think about how scared they were and you know not fa and facing the unknown and not really sure you know whether they were going to make it out of there alive or not you know so we can think about you know what kind of storms have you faced uh that you that have had you frightened you know we've all faced some kinds of storms that's made us afraid but the storms i want to talk about this morning are the storms that come up in life and we have been dealing with them this message that God has been speaking to me about, you know, the storms that, you know, even, you know, that I've been dealing with, you know, all the questions of uncertainty of life and where he's taking me and what's going on, you know, and I want, you know, I really, I just want to be real with you all, you know, we're sharing Jesus in life one mile at a time, and so I really want, you know, to tell you, even though I got pastor in front of my name doesn't mean nothing, I'm just like you, I'm just an ordinary guy, we face, you know, face stuff. And I know that you all are going through storms. We all have storms that come up. And some could be small. Some could be major. And some just, I mean, they'll just flat turn your world upside down. You know, I get it. It's it's hard uh, to understand sometimes you know, if we're going to make it out the other side of this storm. You know, have you ever thought about, you know, his, uh, why God allows these storms? in our lives i mean i mean what's what's the point and i believe he allows us to go through them you know to test our faith so it'll grow and we are closer and and you know, end up ultimately closer to him i mean let's face it if everything was just you know roses then you know why would we need to depend on god i mean we wouldn't would we i mean let's be honest you know that's when we look at James 1, uh, verses 2 and 4, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you go into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let your patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So we're supposed to you know, consider joy when we go through these trials. Uh, you, know, and, you know, and I try, and you know, many times I failed going through things it's just you know it's like okay god you know because people you know they'll ask why me god but you know sometimes we gotta ask why not me you know we need to be shaken up and get tested and you know so that we rely on god and and really just truly just trust in him and we can say you know i'll praise you lord in this storm in this time of my life and this is our message this morning We'll be diving into a portion of scripture. Maybe some of you have heard it. You know, uh, it's about a group of men facing a storm that really just rocked the world. It's going to be in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. You know, when we look at our world, you know, and the things, the storms, the things that's really going on here. I mean, with the COVID, the jobs, you know, all this, the, the mask mandates, the school, the corruption, um, you know, all the things health problems money um, you know it seems like the f you know the world's going through an f5 tornado and a hurricane at the same time i mean really 
it seems almost impossible to praise God during these storms of life because we don't know the direction. I told somebody the other day, sometimes I feel like that I was blindfolded, set in a canoe out in the middle of the ocean and told to find my way back. You know, I mean, this is, I mean, sometimes it can, it can just really just get us all turned around. But our message is this morning is, I will praise you in the storm. You know, there's a song from Casting Crowns titled, I'll Praise You in the Storm. At the beginning of the song, it says, you know, I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down and wiped our tears away, stepped in and saved today. But once again, I say amen, and it's still raining. You know, those are powerful words. I love that song. And I believe that we can ask, you know, God, where are you? Why is this storm still raging? You know, we can lose our focus and, and become so focused on the storm that we forget to focus on the one who's in control. With all that is happening in our personal lives and all throughout the world or, you know, around us, the question is, how can we praise God in the storms of life? Let's pray, and we'll begin to jump in our scripture and break it down. Father God, Lord, um, help us this morning just to understand that through the times and trials and storms of our lives that we can still just rely on you and just and say thank you lord for getting us through another day and lord just teach us this morning as we drive through our scripture father bless us and may this message be a blessing to someone who is watching it because i know when i was preparing it lord it spoke to me lord we love you in jesus name amen all right so Let's, I'm going to just go through the text and then we'll go back through and just kind of break it down. This is Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Uh, on the same day when evening had come, he had said to them, Let's cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they had gone along with him in the boat as he was, and the other boats were also with him. And great, a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat against the boat. So that it was already feeling, but he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care? We are perishing. And then he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you still have no faith? And feared, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him. And may God add the blessing to the reading of his word. So let's jump back in now. And just, I want to go through this and just kind of break it down and talk about it and apply it to our, our lives. You know, because we look in, uh, uh, on verse 35 where it says, on the same day when the evening come, he said to them, let's cross to the other side. So where are they been? Uh, let's talk about, you know, you know, where was Jesus going? I mean, why leave this place? I mean, he's been here teaching. I mean, this is where he fed the 5,000. I mean, you know, he's been teaching, and there's been people getting saved. I mean, everything's going great. The church is growing. I mean, it, it, so why go to the other side? What's what's over there that's so important that he's like, whoa, put the brakes on, let's go. Okay, so they, um, Jesus was on a mission. I had kind of glance at my notes here. Make sure I didn't jump ahead of myself. But Jesus was going to the other side because there's a man. And there's another portion of scripture. And I might do this uh, sometime pretty soon. But there's a uh, dude on the other side who's possessed by a legion of demons. If you know the story in the Bible. And uh, so, uh, and this guy was like really in trouble. He was in dire need. And Jesus was about to go set this guy free. So they had to leave the multitude to go find the one, you know, to go to the one who needed him. And so this is where Jesus is going. Sometimes we may not know where Jesus is taking us or understand why, but he does. And that's where our faith is tested and we must go. And I really feel like this is where <laughs> my life here lately. How about you? You know, often I say when I feel like God's working, I can't figure it out. I always say, Lord, I just I just need a billboard. You know, big bright lights telling me, hey, go this way, do this, yeah, whatever. And so, you know, that's what we want is, is our human side. We got to know what's around the next corner. And God's like, well, sometimes I just need to prepare you to go around that next corner. 
So let's keep reading. In verse 36, it says, Leaving the crowd behind, he took him as he was, and there was also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the wind, or the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Uh, that was a different version. Uh, it said, let's talk about uh, where they were. They were on the Sea of Galilee. Okay, so the Sea of Galilee is 696 feet below sea level. So it's kind of like in a bowl, uh, which caused wind drafts and sudden storms. Uh, kind of like Florida. It's one of the things I have learned about running down in Florida. It rains every day there somewhere. Uh, generally, you know, just for a short time, just a brief shower, but it rains. So, I mean, you know, people are, are used to it, just like these people here in this time. You know, it's hit and miss, you know, where it pops up, you know. So, a regular storm, it wouldn't have bothered them. I mean, in fact, when we look at the disciples, they worked here. I mean, this is this is their job. I mean, they were fishermen. I mean, they were on the Sea of Galilee all the time. They, they knew what was going on. They knew the storms popped up, but... What about today? Today was different. Usually the storms are like no biggie, but today this was a storm. And I believe that Jesus wanted to teach him something. I mean, he knew the storm was coming. I mean, he's he's God, right? I mean, he knew this storm was coming. <clears throat> you know, that's what we were talking about, um, made me think, just a couple weeks ago. Remember when I was talking about it? I was like, if we knew the storms were coming, we wouldn't get in the boat. Well, that's probably what this was. Jesus knew the storm was coming, and he's like, well, we're going to go to the other side. And, um, you know, if they knew this was coming, they'd be like, mm, no. And so, but anyway, we're looking at verse 38. It says, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. So he's up there taking a nap. And the disciples were woken. Teacher, <laughs> we're going to die. We're, don't you care if we drown? I mean, they're running around that boat. I mean, crazy, pulling ropes, flipping sails around. I mean, they're probably chucking stuff off out in the sea, trying to make the boat lighter so it stays up, probably using buckets and, you know, because they didn't have electric bilge pumps and stuff back then. You know, I, I picture maybe like the show, The World's Deadliest Catch. You know how you see the big storm and they're like standing straight up and down and then come crashing and you see guys flying across the deck getting knocked, beat around. You know, I'm thinking of a storm like that, you know, and this ship getting tossed around like a just a dish towel. And Jesus was, he wasn't afraid. I mean, he was asleep. He was taking a nap. And we here see, and this is where we see that that human side of Jesus, he'd been teaching all day, you know, and he was tired. And so he took a nap, was relaxing, you know. How could he just fall asleep during the storm? I don't know. I mean, do you know people? I know <laughs> my brother, you know, he used to be able to sit on the couch and out. It didn't make no difference. I mean, you know people like that can just fall asleep, doesn't matter what's going on around them. And, uh, and so, this is this is what we see here. Jesus is asleep. He's and the disciples are running around scared. They're walking around. You know, you know, I mean, they're running across the ground, waking Jesus up, freaking out, and everyone, Jesus, can you help us, please? I mean, come on, man. I don't know what you can do, but do something better than sleeping. One thing I would, would like to point out: uh, the disciples didn't know. Uh, you know, what to do other than cry out the only one that they knew may be able to do something to save him just yeah, but yeah, they wasn't sure what he was going to do or how he was going to get them through this but they just know hey you need to be, do something please you know help us if anyone can you can do it you know this was jesus right and so he gets up and what's he do he rebukes the wind and the waves and he says quiet be still and then the wind died down and was completely calm this is what Jesus does. Can you imagine what that must have looked like? I mean, it was like a major hurricane, and all of a sudden it's crickets. <laughs> that would have been a draw-dropping moment. And I wonder what went through the disciples' minds right at that moment. The one thing, when Jesus calms, calms things down, guarantee you're going to know it. But it's like the storms in our lives. You know, John 14, 27, Jesus speaking, says, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives, nor do I, or not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, 
or my peace, let me, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you, and not let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When we face the storms of life, we need to remember that who, you know, remember who can speak to the storm and calm it with his voice. How many times have you had to deal with major storms in your life when you can't see past the next wave just thinking, this is it, I'm not going to make it. We begin to cry out, cry out to God not knowing the outcome. You know, you all know the stuff that I've been dealing with with no work and, um, and the decisions that need to be made. You know, I've, you know, sometimes, I mean, you feel like the God's just asleep at the wheel. And, you know, you're not understanding you know, really what's happening and what's going to happen and how you're going to deal with. And sometimes, you know, I, one of the things I told my wife, I was like, I don't want us to be an Abraham and Sarah and jump the gun and do something because I'm trying to fix the situation. And it's not really what God wants. And I'm kind of seeing that now. And really things are becoming clear. Um, and so, you know, the storm is calming down, is what I'm trying to say. And so we know that the storms will calm down. We just have to keep trying or keep pushing forward, keep relying on God. In verse 40, Jesus says to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And that's the question for you and I right now today is, do we, why are we so afraid of what's going on in our world? Do we not have faith? I think about the tone that Jesus would have had with them. Maybe the tone that Jesus has with us asking us that question. It wasn't, you know, you know, why are you still afraid? I mean, do you still have no faith? I mean, come on. It was, it's not that. It's, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You, trust me. Is what Jesus is trying to tell us. Trust me. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts I, that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not evil, and give you future and a hope. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. We must have faith and believe in what the Bible says. The Bible says, No weapon forced against us shall prevail. And when Jesus said He would never leave us or forsake us, we can take Him at His word. And when we look at verse 41, it says, They were terrified and asked each other, who is this that even the winds and waves obey? The disciples, well, they had a new view of Jesus and just who he was. They seen him do miracles. They, I mean, it, you know, they were taught many things, but they had truly not grasped that Jesus was Lord of all things. They learned as they went. But we have an advantage over the disciples. We have God's Word. We have the Bible. And we can see everything that they experienced. We can see who Jesus is, who God truly is through his word. If we just take time and read it. You know, Jesus knew that there were times that things were going to come along and to shake us to the core. And knew that the world was going to become more, you know, eviler, you know, as it were. Uh, you know, I mean, the world is just gone, plumb, I mean, off the rails crazy. You know, Romans 1, you know, even there, it says they invented new ways to be evil. And we see this every single day on the news. And re Well, if you watch, depends on what news you watch. But if you really do your research, you will see that the nonsense is continuing to get worse and get worse and get worse. But we just have to trust God and follow his direction and do what he tells us to do. And we can have peace during these times. You know, in 2 Timothy 3, it tells us that there, you know, in the last days, there's going to be, you know, conceited uh, people being uh, lovers of money instead of lovers of God. We see they're going to be disobedient, rash, you know, uh, I mean, just, they're going to be just pure evil. And it says, in the last days, there will be perilous times. I mean, that's how it starts out. So we know that as we grow, that we are in the last days, we know it's growing closer to the time that God's going to come back and, 
before he raptures the church out. And we just have to hang on. And these are the times that we're living in. But we have hope that surpasses all understanding. This is a great opportunity for us to show others that God is bigger than the world's problems. You know, Joshua 1, nine it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, the last video I did, I talked about, you know, being bold, being, you know, let's shout, let's be louder than the evil. You know, we, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. If we know God's with us, then why are we being quiet? Why are we allowing the storms to overtake us? We can praise God in this storm. Why? Because no matter what, God has the final say. I've, you know, I've been you know, shouting this for a long time and I know it. And the battle has been won. We have been fighting for victory. You and I know this, so I've talked about it. Remember, we cannot allow fear to push out our faith. And a lot of times I think that's what's going on. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And we need to hang on to that. We do not have the spirit, which is not of God. We do not have the spirit of fear. God has his Holy Spirit in us. We should be as bold as lions and ready to go. There are three things that we can take from this message. First is that God's promises, God's promise to us is to always see us through. Deuteronomy 31 8 says we, he promised never to leave us or forsake us. The second is God is with us. Romans 8 31 says if God is for us, then who can be against us? And third, the storms of life did not catch Jesus off guard and he is not worried. We can have peace to him. Again, I want to reiterate and read John 4, 14, 27. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. I gives do I give to you. Let your hearts be troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You know, this message is so important. You know, we need to understand, you know, storms are coming. Jesus is going to see us through it, and don't be afraid. Just have faith. If we allow the storms and the fear of the unknown to consume us, we will sink. You know, I think about all the churches that have closed and will never reopen because of fear of something they can't control. We just need to trust the one who is in control because we're not in control when it comes to the things that we've been facing. But God is. This is where faith comes and Christ comes into play. We have nothing to fear and, and no matter what, we can praise Him in our storms. My, mayor, you know, my prayer is that this will embolden you and strengthen you and let you know that no matter what you're going through, no matter what we are having to face, that we can trust in Christ. We can trust him to calm the storm. He's going to get us through the other side. You know, one of the things we read up here, and Jesus said, he told the disciples to get in the boat that they were going to the other side. It didn't matter how bad that storm was. It could have sank and that boat would have turned into a Holy Ghost submarine and still made it to the other side because God has the final say. We can trust Him. We can, we can have faith. We just need to know that when our storms come, and they're coming, I mean, they're coming. I know so many people who are facing storms. I know a, a family who just, uh, her husband just died unexpectedly, and he's, he might be my age, or maybe a little bit younger. We don't know you know, what's going to come around the next corner and just knock the breath out of us. But we need to understand that no matter what, God's going to see us through. Every time. He's going to provide. He's going to He's going to be the one who calms that storm in our life. You know, one, we got to be obedient. We need to be in prayer. We need to be reading our Bibles. We need to spend, been spending time with Him. 
so that we're walking in fellowship and when he tells us to get in the boat that we're getting in the boat and we're going we got to have faith God will see us through so my prayer is that I hope that you've been encouraged and maybe he gave you some peace and maybe the storm that you're going through knowing that the outcome is God will calm that storm you just have to hang on and maybe it's preparing you for the next storm is coming maybe you'll remember this message or maybe you'll remember this scripture and you'll be able to go back and read it and you're like you know what god's got this i can i can still smile i can still you have joy i can still have peace yeah because we can allow the storms to come up and it could be you know satan causing problems and we can allow him to take our joy away and cause us not to have peace when we do that, we're not trusting in God. We're not, he's, you know, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? That will be the question that God is asking us. You, know, he's like telling me, he's telling you, when you have these storms, and it's not if, it's when, because you are going to go through something that's going to be hard. We just have to trust him. God always has the final say. So I hope this message was an, an encouragement to you. Uh, let's end in prayer, and I'll get this uploaded, and we will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, thank you for messages that, that just speak to us and allow us to know that you know, you're in control, you've got our backs, and you will give us peace in the, the darkest hours of our lives. Father, we know that the storms of life are going to come along and knock the wind out of our sails and take and just shake us up. But Lord, we know that all we got to do is just hang on to you and you will calm these storms. We just got to be vigilant and praying and, and seeking you and reading your, your word and make sure we stay focused on you. And we will be victorious out the other side of this storm and be stronger and closer to you because of it. So, Father, give us that peace. Give us that, the confidence to be able to stand against the storm and just hang on to you. And, Lord, if there's anyone who has watched this video and does not know you, maybe this will be the day that, that they decide to seek you out and to ask your forgiveness of their sins and their lives and calm the storm. Because, you know what? Without you, we have no peace in storms. We have no confidence of coming out the other side. Everything revolves around you, Lord. And let us just hang on to you and understand that. So, Father, anybody that watches this video that does not know you or is struggling, may they reach out, you know, comment, uh, whatever, and so we can be in prayer for them or answer questions for them. Father, again, we love you. Just keep moving us forward. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, and also remember, at Pastor Lucas 7 on Instagram, um, there's also an email address here uh, on my contact info on this page. Uh, it's uh, travelingpastor334 at yahoo.com. You can email me, and uh, we can talk that way. So, but anyhow, we're going to close this out, and... Well, we're going to go up and finish getting ready because we're going to be preaching this message. But, you know, it'll be a little bit different. But it, we're going to be preaching this uh, here in just a little bit. So thank you all. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. And I hope that it was an encouragement to you. And we will see you on the next one.